talk like a person from Harlem. And she's just a riot, she's as sweet as she could be. We lost her at 89 years old. So the two of them come together, broke, broken families, and decide to have all us kids. And my dad bought this farm in upstate New York. I was telling the story last night. So my father used to go hunting up there, and he met a realtor, told me he was looking for a farm. And the realtor called one day in 1952, two years before I was born. And my mom said she, my dad's face got all white when the realtor was talking to him. He said, I'll be there tomorrow. The guy found this property, 200 acres of land, beautiful house on it. So he goes up there, $22,000. Can you imagine that? Well, that was then. My dad had the money. So one of the things I like to talk about, a lot of times when you have a dream and vision, it'll come true if you pray about it and you're consistent. God will put it right in front of you. But if you're not ready to move, too bad. My dad had the money. He said, I'm going to buy the property. Two days later, the realtor called back and said, this is Mac, and they called him Mac. I called him Mac. All those little kids, we called him Mac, not Dad. Mac for McCoy, that was his name, right? Hey, Mac, all these little kids. Anyhow, he said, the, uh, the seller won't sell it to you because you're a Negro. And his, uh, Bing Crosby owned the property. Those many of you who know who he is, he was a famous musician, singer. He said, I'm not selling it to a black man. Tell him to forget it. So my father had a friend who was Irish, Gave him the money, he went and got it under contract. 30 days later, my dad walked in and closed on the property. Right? Praise the Lord. So, now what was amazing when I came down here and started riding around looking at these houses, all these peach trees and cherry trees, my dad planted all those trees on the farm. So he had this vision, he manifested it back through. So it was very motivating for me in my career. So when I, whatever I do, I try to honor everything that he did in his life to give us a life. And mostly what he taught me genera on a generational basis was hard work, honesty, integrity, be proud of who you are, do the right thing. And I certainly haven't always succeeded th at that, but overwhelmingly, I know I have a good name and I treasure that. And I, I, I hate people being taken advantage of because they don't have resources or they're ignorant. That's the thing that drives me in life. So as I gotten into, and we started Urban America, we've raised almost a billion dollars of equity. We've done over $2 billion of investments, hotels, shopping centers, housing, retail. Now we're doing big master plan communities. We have $3 billion of master plan communities underway, almost all of them in opportunity zones. And through that process, we had the opportunity to decide who we were gonna do business with in these communities, going to contracting and employment. So we created over 30,000 jobs for the residents in those communities. Why not? I was in charge. It doesn't make sense to me if you're gonna build in a community why you bring contractors in from somewhere else. And that the fruit of that, I did it because we were able to, and also it was the right thing to do, but the fruit of that is incredible because three years ago I decided to get out of the pension fund advisory business because as a minority firm they put you in this little box. Like this year, we're gonna put out $3 billion into real estate into the sector you're investing in. But if you're a minority firm, we're gonna cut off you guys 300 million. So you, if you're an institution of real estate, that's no money at all. You gotta divide it up among six people. I got tired of someone categorizing me rather than my, for my skills and talents for my color. I didn't wanna deal with it anymore. So we walked away from it and I decided to get back into the development business, went back to cities where we had done projects and talked to the politicians and the nonprofits about putting together master plan communities. And they said, Richmond, you did everything you said you were gonna do. What do we need to do to get you here? So now we go in and get free land or subsidized lands and subsidies and TIFs to build entire communities which we bring in other developers as part of it, because movie theaters and hotels and different types of housing, we're not gonna build it all, but we get it all entitled, put the incentives in place and do it. So when I started hearing about St. Croix and the tremendous opportunities there and the tax structure there and much of that land is an opportunity zones, I was kinda interested, but I didn't wanna go to the Caribbean. I've been asked to go to the Caribbean over and over and over, increasingly over the last six months. People, you gotta come to the Caribbean, you gotta go to the Virgin Islands. I didn't wanna go, I got enough to do. But I came to recognize that's part of my DNA now. This is a designated natural assignment to me. 
because I keep hearing about it over and over and over. And Colin introduced me to Jimmy. Then it turns out I know another guy named Jerry Butler, who's a big player in the Caribbean, used to work with the World Bank. So all the resources that I need are there. And we heard about the dry port 